Okay, now I invite Professor Tanaka Bukis, Takano Bukis, Kyushu University, Japan. Professor Kis received his doctorate in 1991 from Kyushu University. Currently, he is the director of both Research Institute of Superconductor Science and Systems and a Low Temperature Center at Kyushu University. He is expert in the area of superconducting materials characterization. He is recipient of the 15th JSAP Fellow Award 2021 from Japan Society of Applied Physics. Outstanding Achievement Award in 2018 from Cryogenics and Superconductivity Society of Japan. 19th Superconductor Science and Technology Award in 2015 and 10th Superconductor Science and Technology Award in 2006, both from the Society of Non-Traditional Technology. He has also been awarded Joint Research Cooperation Program between Indo-Japan in collaboration with Professor Gore and Professor Datta, Indian Institute of Technology, Kharagpur. He contributes also to the management of international academic organizations and conferences. He is currently a board member of International Cryogenic Engineering Committee, ICC, International Cryogenics Materials Conference, which is ICMC, and European Society for Applied Superconductivity, ESAS, CSSJ, and a member of the Administrative Committee of the IEEE Council on <laughs> Superconductivity. Thank you very much. That's a very kind introduction. Uh, I would also like to acknowledge the organizing committee for inviting me to such a uh, wonderful symposium. And I noticed that it is time for lunch, but uh, thank you for remaining. Yeah. Okay. I'd like to uh, keep my time. Good. Uh, okay. Today. I want to talk about the topics titled by Recent Advancement of Characterization Technologies Authority of High Temperature Superconducting Wires and Reliability of Wires. So this is the outline <coughs> of my talk today. And after the that, we have to mention about recent advancement of the protein product capitalization. Especially, we wish to introduce machine learning based media analysis for the characterization. So, briefly about the two different kinds of machine learning based analysis. The classification of the effect and the other one is the object classification of the effect position. And also, we succeeded in using IC measurement at the actual operational position. They get hearing temperature and under magnetic field. And next, I'd like to also show some results in the investigation of coil winding. How can we find the defect in coil winding? Not only the state, but also the winding. We should investigate that. Okay. So the most important requirement for the characterization of such a application is Mark scale and Mark model. Also, under real working condition. Right? So because the inferior current carrying capability was strongly, strongly influenced by the nano structures of the materials because of the flux spinning, as I briefly showed in the lecture yesterday. So the process dynamics should be controlled properly by controlling such nano structures by introducing the artificial pinning center. But at the same time, other broken obstacles such as defects and microscopic defects or brain bundling is in the range of several tens of micrometer or even millimeter scale. And the wire that the product is going extended to the kilometer scale and uh, one such types of coils. And coils should be assembled to each other. 
So we did the yeah. different lens yeah. scale that had a um, very over 12 decades of special scale. So we should control in such multiple decades. So actually, nowadays, most of the code conductors will be tested before the shipping by using such advanced technology as the Tipster, that is the continuous IC measurement and the liquid nitrogen temperatures. After magnetize the trick, they will uh, measure the field profile just on top of the tape. Then, because of this radiant is in proportion to the critical current, they can simply evaluate local IC values with a special resolution of, say, one millimeter, something like that. However, usually on the such data, so the blue line and the red line is repre representing the maximum, minimum IC by the maximum IC. So that means there is some difference between minimum and maximum. So that indicates there is some kind of scattering in the wires. Of course, there is no obvious current drop, but we still have some such kind of fluctuation. And also, most of the measurement will be done at the self-field condition, very weak field, and 77 Kelvin. But that is far from the actual operation condition. Right? Only for check the quality of the wire, free from this kind of defects. But actually, not yet know what the current carrying is really. So to get to that, we need to carry a separate type of measurement. Usually, we use that show piece. They're making narrow bridge. Yeah, then measure current and voltage characteristics at yeah. different temperature or magnetic field. Yeah. Then because yeah, this is the practical performance yeah. of the wire. Yeah. In many cases, however, yeah. we obtain electric field divided yeah. by the voltage of the next. Also, the current density divided by the current so presumably, we assume that the sample is uniform. But if not that breeze, we can only measure voltage and current. Right? So unless perfect homogeneity, we cannot actually apply such assumption. So that is the issue. So especially in case of long length wires, can we simply apply such a relationship to the case of very long Wire itself. Actually, it is not yet fully understood in case of what happening in actual wires in such lengths of hundreds of meters. Okay. So that means we definitely need high speed measurements, which is applicable for real operation conditions. Right? It is not enough measuring only a 77 Kelvin cell field. And also, after mining pancake oil, we usually test it by applying a current before assembling that. Okay? There are tens of pancake oil should be assembled to fix the final MRI magnet system. But to do that, we should test each pancake oil first. Then sometimes we observe IC degradation just after winding and cooling down the sample, the oil. Then, unfortunately, the IC is degraded. And that of the original one. That's supposed to be high enough, however, degraded. At this moment, the uh, yield rate of such coil has not yet reached 90%, slightly less, or around 90%. So it sounds that 90 is high enough, but maybe it is okay only for single packet coil, but in actual production, we should assemble it. And so twenty. So you can easily understand that zero point nine or twenty is unbelievably low. So we should obtain packet coil much much higher reliabilities. But we only can know by measuring such low or IV characteristics of the coil. We can only tell oh this coil is okay or this coil is not good. However. No mechanism is clarified yet. Why I see the in such a So, 
But the reason we should know which part of the wire is degraded, then we should clarify the mechanism of such degradation after mining. And why? So our strategy for such questions are something like that. We combine biological electromagnetic electrolytization techniques, measuring critical current or voltage dynamics for flux participation, and those are combined with the microstructure analysis, such as TEM or X ray tomography. Then we can find out the reason why current is limited in which point. Then such information can be fed back to the Processing, such as wire processing conditions or coiling conditions. And then we can finally improve the reliability of the final production of the coil. So, again, the key one here is that multimodal characterization. We should combine different measurement techniques. So, here we talk about different two types of characterization. One of them is the tape strands, and the other one is the coil lines. Then, try to clarify the current limiting. So let me start from the detection of cut blocking of the circles in the coding conductors by using magnetic microscopy combined with a machine learning based image analysis. So let me start from the image classification. Okay, so what is a magnetic microscopy? In our lab, we developed high resolution real to real standing for all microscopy. So this is a photograph of this. Equipment. So we scan the whole flow very quickly by using the linear submotor while firing the wires in the liquid nitrogen pass. But after magnetization, we can obtain the profile of the field just above the tape. So from that field profile, we can actually solve the inversion problem that is the field about flow, and then we converted it to the current density free component. In the tape sample. Here we have only one important assumption. We just assume the current is the sheet current density. Because the tape itself is thin enough. So we can ignore the thickness dependence. So that is the important assumption for this case. So anyhow, by measuring the current field profile, we can obtain such results. So this is a remanent magnetic field. So the central region having a strong magnetic field because of the triangle shape of the trap magnetic field. And from that, we can obtain such magnification current inside the tape. Okay. So by integrating across the weeks, we can obtain the IC as a function of longitudinal position. For this case, you can see some part of the one part of the tape week has lower JC value. Therefore I C T is reduced slightly. Okay. But this reduction actually is not much, right? So usually such sort of local isotope cannot be well understood by such measurement as the tape star because that is inside the fluctuation of the tape itself. Let me tell you further more. So this is a result if we plot the whole range of the two hundred meters. So previous image was only five centimeters, but we can actually obtain 4,000 of the images that we can calculate two ranks of the 200 meter wire. Then very similar result of the tape star. Again, so maximum IC and the minimum IC have some gap, right? So that is a fluctuation. That is very similar to the case of very noisy signal. So background noise is something fluctuated. So inside that, Actually, we have some kind of important signal coming from defect. But from, only from that, we cannot see that because the fluctuation is too rough to identify the small de defect, small IC drop coming from the defect. Okay. Actually, if we draw the statistics obtained from this analysis, that is the 10 to the fifth numbers of the data, then we plot them, then we study the uh, probability density functions from this data. And as you see, there is some kind of tail, right? But the probability of such tail is very small, only 10 to the minus fifth. So such types of, type of statistics can be visualized only if 
you can measure local lengths with very high spatial resolution, such as hundreds of micrometer or millimeter to 200 or 300 meter graphs. Okay? So coming from such tail region, suggesting that that is a kind of extrinsic phenomenon, right? Actually, if we plot the image taken from such tail region, actually, we can confirm local JST draw. And you see here. Then we can find actually there is some extrinsic defect existing in this wire, something like that. That sounds good enough, right? Because of the thanks to the two dimensional measurements, actually, we can do such analysis. However, if you try to study full range without looking over IC, we have to test 4,000 of images. Whether or not those are including defects or not. That is actually in realistic. Even though my students are very enthusiastic to analyze that, but uh, it is not applicable to industrial technology. So, to do that, of course, uh, we should think more smartly. So, that is the introduction of the deep learning method. So, we selected several defect images from the measurement, then we can use it as a teaching data. So we adopted the convolutional neural network. Actually, the basic model we selected from the Google Net. So that was already pre-trained using a lot of images. Then we modified the output region because we, can, we, we only need to know healthy or activated data. So only two classes. Then we fine tune the parameters of this model by using our own training data set. Okay. So, as you may already know, by training, we can tune the parameters for bias and uh, question weighting. Then we can obtain very good results. Uh, of the very small numbers or less and high uh, test accuracy. Here we tested 20% of the training data set for evaluation and validation. So anyway, by such model, we tested uh, performance using the confusion analytics, and the recall value is 0 0.7, while the accuracy is 0 0.9387. So the F1 score is 0 0.86. So that means that is very well balanced. So not too much for negative, not too much for positive, but well balanced numbers of the defect can well be detected by using this. So after confirming that, we apply this to the full range of the wire, which I showed you coming from the 4,000 images. Then this is a result we obtained from this model. So this is a case of Section having a minimum IC of 250 amperes. Actually, this region is a defect, and the model will tell us this is a heat map. So, this region was defect, but because of this region, then this is a confidence number 0.9992. So, almost 100% model confident this is a defect included image. And this is also, and this, and this. So, actually, it is surprising to us. Because those regions, for example, this region has the minimum IC is already 270 amperes. That is very close to the average numbers of the value itself, even though it still contains a global IC So that cannot be visualized only from that global IC measurement. So again, I brought such history. In the initial stage, I only took this tail region, but actually, similar phenomena has occurred even in such high IC regions. The red region is influenced by the defect, but the blue one is the defect free region. So, such a process as more precisely can show the existence of the local defect. The frequency of such defect in this state is. One or two five sections will be detected in one minute. So that is actually very rare. If you cut some section, 
to measure the input RC, probably you do not catch such defect region. So then you should successfully obtain the IV characteristic variable. But actually, the bottleneck occurs only in such very, very low frequent regions. So we should know such minimum IC behavior more carefully. Okay. So as far as we know, the over IC it is not enough. We should analyze more carefully, otherwise we cannot see. Then we furthermore extend this approach by using multiple categories. So in the previous model, we just define healthy or defective. Right? And defective images were taken from the very serious country IC drop in the tail region. But we now more carefully selected the training data images because we now know the region influenced by the defect, then we can now set more precisely select the training data depending on size. Okay? So here we categorize three different sizes, small, having the length of the pile scale, the medium size and the large size. So we now have different three categories. Then we pick up the more images that the initial case. The large one is 40 and the medium is 57 and small is 89. And also the normal region was also selected 100 images for training. Then we did the similar thing for classification, then obtain such a uh, computer matrix. So we only will again train, then we analyze the tape again, then this is the result. In case of rush defect region, again heat map shows the position of the defect and actually the size of the defect is as shown in the training setup data set, and similar to the case of medium and small. So now we have different three types of the defect size by using the classification model. So now we can categorize even more detail, not only the defect, but how much defect size is. Then we can also calculate the percentage of such defect region. Then the normal region is about 43, while the small region is under 40. But the only 20% region are still can be improved by such large and medium sized people. Okay. So, by using such classification model, we can correct more detailed information with regard to the local defect. But also, another useful approach is object detection, again, using the machine learning. Method. Not only the classified defect, but also we can apply the regression to show the position using a bounding box. So combining classification and the regression, we can identify the position. Okay, so this is how we can select the training data set for object detection. We need to first label the defect, right? So we should define the defect position clearly. Then we can see the background of the normal region. So now we can apply the gas to the clear to the normal region. So in this case, we can help with the defect, right? So we can select this region as a level of the defect. Okay. Then we can try to. Right. So, this is the result. This is the uh, uh, training for the precision, whether or not the box can detect the defect or not. And also, we evaluate the intersection over union, IOU. IOU means the ground truth is the data used for training, while the prediction is coming from the box. So how closely those two amounts? So the number of our model is 76. So that is quite good. So the boundary box can actually precisely predict the ground truth position. So this indicates that we can now identify the position of the defect. Not only defect but not, but also more detailed information such as the position or the size can be now identified by using such boundary box. This is the result of the prediction using this model, right? So the red square here is the result of our 
So by using this analogy, we can now know the position of the defect at where this local bias is influenced by such local defect in here. So the other position is fractured slightly that not really influenced by such kind of the So now we can see different IC fluctuations depending on different two regions. So we could compare the orange one is IC distribution influenced by local obstacles, while the gray region is free from such defect. And actually, we selected only local defect free region only. Then we can compare the statistical distribution of those two. So that is coming from the intrinsic fluctuation of the cube position of the itself. While the orange region is more influenced by the obstacles, most probably coming from the substrate. So I do not have enough time to go in detail, but such information the statistic is also very important information for understanding this informant. Then we also compare the defect size because we now know the size of bounding box versus the IC separation due to such obstacles. Then how do you clear it? So the red one is the data taken each five centimeter section. So it is scattered a little more. But we obtain the root mean square value for each defect size, that is the blue dot here. And you clearly see that the IC separation is going up linearly as the defect size is larger. From that, we can identify how much it should be detected if we consider how much IC separation. Okay. So typically, if the size is becoming 5 mm or more, we should consider that. That is still okay because the IC separation is still in the level of the intrinsic fraction. As similar to the case, the signal is still less than the noise level, but the defect is becoming larger. The signal coming from that defect is more significant. Okay. So that threshold number is around 5 mm in this case. And we also study the position of the defect in the wires. So we selected the position, such orange straight line, showing the unique position of the defect. So very interestingly, the defect occurs randomly. However, the position is not uniformly distributed. As you clearly see here, there exists a dense region and a sparse region as well. If you calculate the frequency of the adjacent distance between defect to defect, the frequency obeys such pattern of behaviors. So this clearly shows the fractal behavior. So such types of deep defect is called the types of fractal behavior. So that is very useful to make a model which simulates the behavior of long and wide under the influence of the local okay. So this is also very a usual result and new result only obtained from this kind of analysis. Then we also compare the results of the first stage uh, classification and the multiple category classification model. And actually, the first model is almost identical to the region of the medium and large scale size obstacles. So because in the first model, we only take an image from the IC the technician ball of me. So again, the size of the 5mm limit is identical to which the IC is influenced by such low problems. So, we just see some uh, good results adopting such machine learning analysis techniques, and also we should obtain much more information at the real operation conditions, such lower temperatures, not only the 77 Kelvin, but also in field conditions. Then we try to extend our measurement down to 4.2 Kelvin using the limit okay. So we combine supercomposing imaging with the heavy craft, and then we install our supervisor traveling equipment. Then we measure the 
IC distribution and the external magnetic field up to one to at four sugar. So we said from zero point five to one. So because the field is very small and the IC is very large, this is the following with the white tape, but the IC is almost one thousand ampere. Actually, it is not easy for measure by the transport vessel using uh, in such high current ranges because of the heat in its space. Okay. Then those images are normalized by the average numbers in each case and they obtain such results. Okay. Actually the spatial variation of normalized IC was just crops independent of the field strength. 0.2 or 0.5 or 1 plus 1. Okay, so that strongly suggests that the spatial variation coming not from pain, but from some kind of microscopic defect. To confirm that, we also carried out the similar measurement at 77 Kelvin high temperature region. Then again, do the same thing, normalized by the average. Then also superposed to the measurement at the 4.2 Kelvin. And as you see, so again, even at the result of the 77 Kelvin, again, collapsed on the same column. So that shows that the positional dependence is actually independent from that of the field of separate. So we can now describe ICBTX in the long length wire can simply describe by such equation. Spatial variation is separate function from that of the field or temperature dependence. So that part is determined by the nanostructure, that is the flux spinning nature. So that is from much more macroscopic defect. That is the equivalent cross-sectional areas which can current can pass. So this search at the flux spinning properties is very independent, uniform, independent position why the IC fluctuation is mainly controlled by cross-sectional areas variation. That comes from macroscopic defect. So next, I want to tell you about some results on the diagnostic on the public core. So in the case of single public core, it can be simulated something like stacks of the core conductor. Okay, so first we consider how we can visualize a local defect in the coil. So we first simulate such package coil using tape step. Then if we have some degradation at a certain tape region, after we magnetize the whole tape step, this region cannot generate magnetic current because it is degraded. Okay. So in that case, it is equivalent to superpose negative magnetic moment. In the tape cell. That means the field profile should be induced such negative magnetization signal. Then, more clearly, if we plot the spatial derivation along the length, the dip should be observed at the position of the defect. So, that is a very simple mechanism. Okay? So the question is whether or not such simple model can hold in actual tape. So we first have to check that. So we prepare the hundreds of code conductor stack, including one normal tape made of asteroid tape without the overlapping layer. So that is located in the middle point here. Then we magnetize such tape stack, then measure the field profile, then as expected, we are deep actually observed at exactly the position of the asteroid. So those two ends are coming from the So then we believe that this method is suitable even in case of in the case of the Then we apply this method to a large core shielding that is used for the active shielding of the MRI magnet developed in Mitsubishi electric. Then the diameter is a little bit larger than that of the one meter. That is half size of MRI. 
there we scan the story.
delamination occur only at the position under this ready mark. Okay. So now the company convinced to change the method how to uh, mold the tape during the impregnation. Actually, impregnation is one of the very delicate and difficult issues in this case. Yes. All right. So uh, let me summarize my talk today. And in the part of the semiconductor tape characterization, uh, it is very, very effective and powerful to combine with the machine learning based analysis together with the real-to-real dynamic microscopy. Then, for example, we just demonstrated uh, image classification and object detection. That allows us to identify invisible <coughs> defects only from the operator. Because I see itself is frustrating. So that is clear now. So we should also uh, identify such types of defects to know the low carbon reason. Then also we can now understand the size dis distribution and the position of such local defects and uh, either the either in shows some practical type behaviors. Then we recently succeeded in getting I see continuous size measurement, even at liquid heavy temperature and the magnetic field. And that is also very important from the viewpoint of to understand the behavior and the actual operating condition. Actually, that measurement speed is 36 meters per hour. That is very high throughput. And that is also important to combine with the mass learning method. Then, as we follow the coiling characterization, we visualize the defect inside the packet core, and we combine with another type of microscopy, such as uh, SEM of the micrograph, that clearly shows us the mechanism. Why does degradation occur? This is one, only one example, but the uh, uh, issues coming from the coiling tape is now then we now can improve such types of issues that can solve one of the degradation issues. Anyway, this type of approach is very effective and important to improve the reliability and quality of the HTS based oil mining technology. That's all for today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Takanobukis. Uh, very good technical talk and also finishing it in time. Uh, now it is not a lunch time, almost it's tea time. So there will not be any questions. So he is available today and tomorrow morning. Anybody having any question, please uh, contact him. And I request only a small moment to Professor Takanabukis. Please come this side. Sorry, sir. So I will call him there. He is taking his lunch. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you. But there are some announcements from the organizer, so please listen. Yeah. Uh, I would also like, uh, I invite Malika. Malika, I will kindly give the two moments to our chair. the announcement since we are running short of time so what we are going to do is this we are going to start the lunch right away and along with that we are also going to have the first poster session and uh, i would request uh, the session chairs for the poster session dr sandeep pal dr rajat kumar bhuiya dr jedia pradhan and dr pradeep pancha uh, to kindly conduct this poster session and please collect uh, the evaluation sheet from me and uh, we shall be again assembling for the next technical session, oral session one, at the three weeks as a given in the technical program. Okay? So, we will stick to it. Thank you.